Hey folks, this is Matt Rainwater, and today we're going to be reading episode 55 of Trailer Park Warlock, picking up from where we last left off. Uh, we're now, Darla's now in the, <laughs> in the driving wheel here as to like, what is it, what in the heck is going on, right? Uh, and she's going to be finding out more. So now we see Darla, she's walking through Henry's estate. Louisiana. Uh, at this point, it's probably what the year 1840, 1850, in this alternative timeline. Something's got her attention, and it's that mark right there, because that's what she's been using for herself. I really thought I was the only one who knew about this thing. Trailer Park Warlock, The Will of Abandon. So now we're going to learn a little bit about this sigil. Read, please. Uh, once again, this is Pont 2's written voice, so I'm just, I'm not going to do an accent. My name is Jacques Pont 2. I leave this writing for whoever comes upon it, including myself. I was once a warlock of great fortune and power. And you have called me a vampire, but it is only a likeness achieved by a secret technique, transfiguration. By bearing this likeness, I have tread the path of night, and on that path I have made alliances that I would later regret. One such alliance was with the mad Abyssian cultist Jessica Ravenstone. Cursed by her, I sought freedom through a forbidden daywalker sigil called the Will of Abandon. But the will has turned on me. I'm eternally dreaming, reliving the past with profound alterations. As though all the events in my life were merging into one space indefinitely. I've lived countless variations of my life, loving, fighting, dancing, and ultimately dying. I have died as much as I have lived, sometimes in pain and misery, at other times in peace and solace. But with each recurrence, I grow in recognition of my inner turmoil. I've made many mistakes in my life, harmed when I could have healed, quenched when I could have queried, chanced when I could have changed. I took too great a chance when I became a warlock. I dedicate myself to the power of my lowest will. It is the seat of my rage, my pain, and the many betrayals and trials of risk. It has gifted me with great power at great cost. When the hunters came, it seemed the most practical choice for a man willing to protect his friends and possessions. I am grateful knowing Henry and Leah never had to make that choice. But the lowest will is still my master, and I can hear the hunter's approach. If you can read this, you are in an area when men killed, are stalked and killed all practitioners of magic, vampires, and whatever else they could name as evil. Now, these were brutal years. Do not tread the roads at night, dear reader, not only to avoid the hunters, but also to avoid what is left of me. Finally, Please consider these words. Magic is a choice, dear reader, as your will is a choice, as all change is a choice. I have chosen to dance in death. For each of us in this unending dream and the will of abandon, we are its chosen. But do not give yourself up as servant to it. You and the will are now in a dance. Determine who leads and to what you dedicate this dance. He sure, he sure writes English a lot better than he speaks it. Blam, blam, blam. Drug. It's going to check out what's going on. You think that was Tom Harper? Hope so. Say, Jim, now that we ran those vampires out of here, why don't one of us keep the house? You'll get yourself killed doing that. How do you suppose that? You fool, why wouldn't you think they might return? Of course they would, but I can fend for myself. I took a vampire two days ago. It was easy as chopping wood. She was asleep in her bed. You ain't seen the real monsters out here. Hold on, Tyler. You see that? Sure do. Hey there. Best you show yourself or we'll have to come after. You hear me? Swoosh. Oh my god, Jim. Blam, blam. Don't get... Ah! So, they get eaten. And we see Revenstone in her lowest will form. <laughs> Darla's 
Darla's reaction to this is like, okay, I hope she didn't see me. <laughs> Swoosh. Hello, Darla. I kept account of how many times we've crossed paths in these dreams of ours. 389. Instead of killing you outright this time, I want to try something new. Now tell me. How do you know Jacques Pontou? I've never met him in my life. I'm only here to rescue my friend Jake. That's a lie. There are only two people in the world that know Transfiguration because I made sure the rest were dead. Look, lady. I don't know you, and I don't know this Pontou guy. I'm only here for Jake Baker. I got Glamormancy from a guy named Barry, so maybe you should double-check your books. If you don't mind, I've got my own problems to deal with outside of your creepy lover's quarrel or whatever the hell's your problem. 390, then. I'll make sure 390 is your last. So... <laughs> uh... We're going to have ourselves a, uh, a rumble, so to speak. Hopefully that helps explain some of what was happening in the last couple of episodes. Um, that was definitely the intent of this episode. I don't think that it fully 100% ex explains it, and there's further clarification a little later on. Um I had been kind of looking forward to this because I was I had been setting it up, uh, Revenstone and Darla, duking it out, especially because I wanted to give an opportunity for us to sort of. So, one of the plans in this season when I originally wrote it, because we had the bit right at the very beginning of the season, Darla in the back roads where we see her transform into a bull to fight that monster in the backwoods or the back roads uh sorry um and so i was like okay later on in the season i want to in some capacity or another i want us to actually see a more fleshed out version of that so that's next episode right next couple episodes we get a big um duel between revenstone and darla um I don't know if there's anything more to say about this. I, I do think that this episode clarifies fairly well. Uh, just want to clean that up. Fairly well what's been going on. Uh, and we'll have more to talk about it, of course, because there are <laughs> all these things to clarify, right? Uh, quick episode today, just to read through this. Um, I don't really have too many other things thoughts in regards to the storyline at this moment that I can think of. Like I said, um, I mean, I'll say this. I really like the char character of Darla and want to spend a little bit more time with her this season. Um, it's hard, right? Because when you have a story with so many characters and you have a main, you have somebody who is really a main character because like Jake really is the main character of the story. Um, I feel concerned sometimes about veering away from that, right? Because uh, I know that a lot of times there will there will be readers who don't like veering away from the main character. But for me, I'm very much interested in the world. I'm very much interested in holistically, just like all the relationships between characters, what they mean to each other, how they relate to each other, and how they influence and impact each other in the whole storyline. And it's interesting, too, because I think um, I have noticed that a lot of people who do read this are also into D&D &D to some respect. And there must be a correlation there, right? Because D&D &D as a storytelling technique really decent like decentralizes the idea. <laughs> such a buzzword. Uh, <laughs> decentralizes the idea of the main character, right? Because everybody kind of becomes the main character for the dm right the dm is the main character of dungeons and dragons for every other person in the party they are the main character and so i think in a lot of ways i'm kind of thinking in those terms where i am trying to decentralize the main character a little bit you can only go i don't know you can only go so far with that in a story or at least a story as condensed as Trailer Park Warlock is. Um, I would like to mess around with that in a different story at some point in time. 
where there just aren't that. It would be kind of in, uh, Bat Monsters, kind of that way, actually. But um, <laughs> where the concept of the main character really gets kind of boiled down a little bit. Um, I think that's also probably appeal of like. I'm totally going off on a tangent, but if you'll allow me. Um, I think that might also be the appeal of something like a lot of the Marvel movies, spe specifically the Avengers movies, right? I mean, uh, Infinity War and Endgame, right? Like, who who's the main character in those movies? Arguably, it could be Thanos, right? Because he's actually the driving action of the entire thing, and uh, everybody else is responding to him. Um But if we kind of, if we think of the main character as the protagonist, uh, there isn't really a main character in the Avengers storyline. And those movies, those movies work for most people, right? They work for me. They're good. They're enjoyable. Um, and so that doesn't necessarily mean I want to make like a superhero comic or anything, but I, that is an, it's an interesting format to play with. Um, and so maybe that was kind of, that certainly had an influence to some extent in writing this particular storyline. And we'll see a little bit of that in season four too. Like I said, I like the idea of decentralizing main characters um, because, because I think it mimics real life better. Now, does that make for you know, storytelling that lots and lots of people will be into? Eh, I don't know. It's kind of a gamble. Um, it really depends. So anyway, that's all I have to say for today. Uh, if you are enjoying my thoughts, uh, my story, um, please give this video a like, uh, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment. Do you like it? Do you hate it? <laughs> what do you think? Um, and then also, finally, you can talk with me on Twitter. It's at Matt J. Rainwater. On Instagram, it's at Matthew Rainwater. And on Patreon, it's patreon.com slash Matt J. Rainwater. We will talk again soon. And until then, hope you're having a good day. And later. <laughs>